go to the channel section again and go into text here and then get 2D text from texture. Okay, let's now delete our cube from the scene and let's connect our 2D text up instead. Now basically this 2D text is a um, plane which is placed in the environment and then you see you have a texture applied to it here and then when you type a key um, that key will then uh, designate a particular part of this texture to be used and so whichever uh, keys you use it will then use this, the parts of the texture it needs to recreate that text. So you type the text you want to type in here so at the moment that's fine to start with. Um, so we can't see anything at the moment because we need to move it in relation to the camera. So you see here's the camera but our text is actually behind the camera which is why we can't see it. So as we move it out like that you should be able to see it on the screen. So let's move it out a little bit more and then we can start to use the dialogue here to get it to appear properly on the screen. So. Okay, now this is looking a bit better. Let's just put it down there. Um, again, this should be working, but we need to uncheck the Z buffer read and write again so that it's not going to be rendered behind anything. Um, we've got that done there, so uncheck those. And we now have our text being rendered on top of everything else. Okay, so let's go back to the channel section again and let's change our text to something like press L to uh, turn light on or off. Let's now look at adding a 3D model to our HUD. What we could also do is have um, a 3D object overlaid next to this to represent the current state of the light. So let's have a go at doing that. So let's go to File, Import, and get the right directory, import the light switch and you see here we go. So we've got a light switch object here, let's just copy it across to our start channel um, put it in the start group and let's delete the group we imported it to. So we've got our light switch object here. Now at the moment it consists of two separate surfaces. Now let's go and look at it in the object section. Um, well, here it is. Now you can see it's really small and basically it consists of two surfaces here, one of which is the body of the switch and the other one is the actual switch itself. So let's allow this switch to rotate depending on the state of the light. So to do that they need to have separate motions. So to have separate motions they need to be separate objects. So that's the first thing we'll do. Let's copy the object itself and one of these surfaces we will create as the light switch body and the other one can be the switch itself. So let's go back again and try and work out which is which. So I'll name this surface to the switch and the other one can be the switch body. I think I had caps lock on there. Okay, so now that we've got these sorted, I'll rename the objects as well. It's quite important to have consistent naming conventions in Quest because once you have loads and loads of channels all over the place, it makes it a lot easier to keep track of what's going on. Great, so we've got our two objects here. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to create a relationship between their motions. Um, basically what we want to do is parent one to the other so that whenever we move our switch body around, um, the light switch itself is already going to be parented to it. So you can see at the moment they already have parent motions on there. Now that's just um, the way that they're imported. It's, it doesn't have any functionality at the moment. So, so let's take a shortcut from the motion of our switch body and let's take it to the parent of our switch. Let's connect both up to our render for the main project. Actually first of all I'll connect it up to the render of the overlay, not the main project. And from here 
we can go to the animation section and move them around and make sure everything's working as it should. So I'm going to select the switch body and move it around. Let's just zoom in and see that everything is as it should be. So we can see from here we've got both objects and when we move the switch body the light switch itself moves with it so the parenting set up correctly. Now they're black at the moment so let's go to the object section and let's set up the bit of self illumination so that they look better. Now if we zoom out we can see that the light switch is here so let's just give it a little bit of self illumination. I'm going to turn the diffuse down something like that's fine. Go to the animation section and check out that it's okay in the scene. Let's now set up a light for our overlay render. So if we just copy the light from our main scene that should work fine. So I've just copied and pasted it putting it back into the folder here. Now that's set up. Now I've just positioned the switch and the switch body whilst the video record was turned off because that took a minute. So you can see that's now being overlaid on top of our main render along with the text. So what we now need to do is link the rotation of our switch to the um, light's current state. So that's the next stage. If we go back to the channel section what we can do is find our switch which is here and we've got its rotation vector which is here and you can see each of these rotates our switch in a different axis. So this is the one we want to be working with. So basically what we want to do is have our light's current state to be affecting this. We'll now add a few finishing touches. Before we do anything else though, what I want to do is create a new CGR, a new channel group um, for this part of the lesson because our start group's beginning to get a little bit messy now. So what I want to do is put our whole overlay render here in a separate channel group. So I'm just going to unlink it from here and I'm going to go to the channel list and get a channel caller. Now a channel caller is a channel which will basically just call all of its children. It doesn't have any specific function other than that so you can connect anything to it. So what I'm going to do here is use this channel caller um, to call all of the logic from all of the tutorials. So I'm just going to call it logic and leave it like that for the moment. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is go to the group tree, add a new group and let's call this tutorial 04 logic and operators. So we've got our new group here. What I want to do is now copy our overlay render and put it into this new group. Um, what we can now do is go to the channel section and let's put the start 3D scene in the top view and our new group in the bottom one here. So now that we have our logic channel group, our logic channel caller, what we can do is get our 3D render for the overlay and connect it straight up like that in its separate group. And we can now go back to the start group in the single channel view and delete the old overlay render. So you can see the overlay render is still there in the bottom left, it's still working just as it was before but we now have it in a separate channel group. So we've got a bit more space to work with now. So let's make a bit more space here by neatening things up and creating a few directories. We're not going to be adjusting the switch's body anymore so I can put that into a folder and the switch itself we'll be looking at next.